uh, indicators for alarms. Number one is light. There are three lights. Blue, um, yellow and red. Red is critical. Okay, crisis alarm. And uh, orange, uh, yellow is warning. That means you have to attend the patient. Message, not so important. It's just a message on the screen. So the first indicator is the light. The second indicator is the sound. And the third indicator is the message on the screen. I see. Okay, so these are the three indicators for the alarms for our patient monitor. Once this is done, we finish the alarm setup, we go to monitor setup. Now, monitor setup means, for example, I don't want CO2 on the screen. I want to hide it. How to hide a parameter in the patient monitor? First, find CO2 in this list. Let's find. Go down, go down. Go down. Yes, I found CO2. I want to hide it. So, unclick. It's gone. Can you see CO2 anywhere? No, I have not deleted it. I have hidden it. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to bring it back on the main screen. What I do? I click, click, it comes back. So you will ask me why two clicks? One is click for the parameter to show the box. Mm -hmm. The other one to show the waveform. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is why two clicks. So this is done. Procedures. Yeah, I think you will use this cardiac output. We are using the Svancast method. Thank you. The same thing we are using. Okay. The same cable and the same method we use for the cardiac output. You have to, when you inject the catheter, you will just press and you get your waveform and your readings automatically on the screen. That is the cardiac output. That's again used in ICU. Next is data pages. Here, there is a button called other patients. What is this? I want to see the patient who is in room number 15 without going there. I don't want to go there. I want to see it here. You can bring the screen here. You have to <coughs> press data pages and press other patients okay when i press other patients there will be list of bed numbers bed number two bed how many beds are here in icu 16 for example uh, all the beds will be here and i will press bed number five so if i press bed number five it will show me the real time screen of that bed over here this is good for nurses when they take a tea break or something you have to manage two beds at the same time you cannot go jumping around or running around there you can just be here and take care of the <coughs> patients on screen okay it is not coming here because they didn't finish the network only two patients only two patients at the same time not more. not more than that because this is your current patient and this is your viewed patient okay two patients at the same time next trends trends is very very important it shows the history of the patient what happened one hour back what happened five minutes back to the patient this is what the doctor wants yeah the doctor will also ask the history of the patient when he comes for the round so it is in trends. Trends is the button. There are different views for the trends. The first view is graphical history. Graphical history for 24 hours is stored in the machine. But in your central monitor, you have more license, 72 hours. Okay? That is more important. Because patients, they tend to uh, sleep, be in the ICU more than 3 days. So you have more storage there. But in the monitor, you have 24 hours history for the waveform. For nurses, I think you are more interested in numerical data. Like you want to see what was the heart rate of the patient at 7 a.m. Okay, change the view to numeric. So it will be a tabular form. Only numbers will come. The first view, only graph. Second view, only numbers. Heart rate will come here. NIBP will come here. CVP measurement, arterial measurement, CO2 measurements. All the history of the patient is stored here with time. Okay, if the patient is very critical, keep the time interval to one minute. That means every one minute, see, this is the heart rate of this patient. It's already storing it. Okay, this is the heart rate of the patient. After this is done, there is something called event. Event means any tacky, any brady, any asystole, any event that is happening to the patient is automatically recorded here. And anytime you can take a print, it will get printed at the central station. Okay, this is called event, event directory of the patient. Maybe SpO2 is very low, it will be recorded here. If the heart rate is very high, it's recorded here. Okay. Next, print waveform. We don't tell anyone to print from here. Always get printed from the uh, central station. Yes. <coughs> this is very important. Freeze and snapshot. Like, for example, you are with a patient and you saw some abnormality in the ECG. You can take a selfie. Okay. How is it possible? Press. Start. Yes. Now it took a selfie. It's frozen. Correct? Now unfreeze now it will be real time it will go now i want to see this strip where after taking a picture you go to gallery to see the picture right same like that you go to trends and go to snapshot it will be see it's saved here that frozen 
is here. It's telling me the waveform is saved 19th February, that is today, at 13.10, at 1 o'clock. So it is here. So when the doctor comes back after his shift duty or anything, you can just show it to him. Doctor, this happened and he will do the need for it. Okay? This is the selfie feature of our uh, monitor. It's called the freeze. Freeze. These two, I already told you, this is NIBP start for the manual okay. BP. And this is automatic with intervals. I told you, you know, you can put intervals. That's it. Zero pressure for the invasive blood pressure. Okay. And this is silencing the alarm. One last thing about our monitor. How to put the monitor in standby. If the patient is current going for an MRI or a CT scan, no need to discharge the patient or no need to switch off also. You can put our monitor into standby. How to do it? Click on this box and there is a button called standby. Okay? And tell where the patient is. I'm going to tell the patient is in MRI. Or I will tell the patient is in operating room and prepare. So when the patient, when the doctor, audible, okay. To cancel the standby. Okay, enter, enter, entering standby. Disconnect patient to enter standby mode. Why I should disconnect? Ah, okay. They are not disconnected. No? Yeah, yes, it's, that's exactly. That is why. Okay, patient in operating room. Okay, the patient is not here. So when the doctor comes, doctors should not ask you, where is the patient? Answer is there. The patient is in the operating room. This is how you put the patient in standby. Now imagine the patient has come back. After the operating room, everything, he's come back. Just touch the screen. Ah, okay. And everything will come back to normal. And that's it. So when you press this, it's asking three questions. Do you want to continue with the current patient? Or do you want to discharge the patient or stand by? I want to continue with the current patient. So finished. It will get me all the details of the patient from the time he's admitted. Okay. Another thing about is Sister, this. When you say discharge, you're removing from the uh, monitor? Or what? No, I remove the leads. <coughs> leads ah. from the, he's going, no? He's no more here. Yes. When he's on, because you can put this on standby only if the patient is moved right. from this room. That is why. Now, this is something that you can take it out and put in your portable monitor and go with the machine. I will show you how mm. to do it. In this case, you don't, you're not disturbing the patient, removing the electrodes, putting another electrode. is such a hectic thing. So, I don't want this. I want this. I will take it from here. I will do like this and go. Transport. Okay? This is a good feature about a PDM because it has... Oh, my patient. Okay. It has memory. This PDM has memory. Okay. It, it takes all the data of the patient and store it. So even if there's a power shutdown in the KOC hospital, this will store the details of the patient. But for how long? This is for uh, five, hours. five hours. In five hours, power supply has to come back. Okay. So that is how you can transport the patient without removing the SPO2 cuff or anything. No need to uh, remove anything. Just go with the patient by removing the PDM and switching it over here. Okay? Can you show how to use it? Yes. We yes. will show you can have a practice on how to do it. There is a latch. Uh, this latch, pull it. you need to pull it. Take it out. Okay. And how to keep it back? Okay? Just slide in inside. Don't touch anything. Just slide. Finished. Okay? Yeah. So this is my PDM. No connections. You should hear that locking sound. It means to say you're still monitoring the condition yes, of the exactly. patient despite its outcome. Exactly, exactly. So Without in the event there's ha there have been some something events, you can see. You can see. You can see it. Because you're taking the whole thing, the whole memory and putting it inside. That's correct. Okay? So this is our monitor, very intelligent monitor, very easy to use. It's very user friendly. Just switch it on, connect to the patient. You will start seeing all the data only for NIBP. You press the button. That's it. Very simple. So this is the big brother and this is the small brother. This is 850, 650. I will show you everything is same. Everything is same. Yeah. So this, this one is, is stationary. This is, this is mobile. Exactly. This is stationary. This is mobile. And this does not have so many options. But uh, operation wise, like uh, standby, standby, standby. It's all the same platform. The family is Carescape. That is a family. Okay. This is Carescape B650. This is Carescape 850. And this is Carescape V100. The youngest. The low four. Yes. The juvenile. 
Yeah. Okay. This is the vital signs monitor, same family, Kerski. Okay. These two are exactly the same. This is a little different, but same family. Okay. I will introduce this to you now. Now, once the patient leaves the ICU, we need to discharge the patient. Discharging can be done from the central monitor or from here. I will show you. I am sorry to interrupt. Five leads you will not tell us. Five leads. Yeah. Twelve you showed. Yeah. Five leads means you just remove these chest leads. Only. Only. Yeah. Just remove. Remove and remove and keep only this. Five. Five. Okay. No need to change the here. No need to change anything there. This is it. This is the five lead. Okay. Just disconnect this. Okay, if you want 12 lead. Yeah, yeah. Okay, usually what we do is there is a stopper. I just close it like this. Only if you want to use a 12 lead, you open this. Otherwise, keep it closed. Okay. Okay, so or to discharge. Just go to data pages and there's a button called discharge and I'm, it will ask me yes or no. Discharge patient, yes. So when I press yes, it will delete all the history of the patient. You cannot get it back. Okay? You delete all the history of the patient from here and also from the central monitor. So for the discharge, which button you are Data saying? pages data. and okay. discharge. Is there any I think you're going to have a hospital information system. Yeah. yeah, it will be stored there. You can retrieve it from there, but not from our monitor. If central monitor from there, they discharge, it will go from here. It will go from here. You admit from there, it gets admitted here. Okay, that's all. You know where's the standby? You know where is the automatic interval? Yeah, these are the basic things that you should know. To switch off, three seconds, push button. One, two, three, out. Okay, now let's talk about this machine. It's a very interesting machine, V100. Uh, who, which, uh, she was very much interested to learn this. Have you used this before? You haven't used it? No. No, you don't have it. Oh. <coughs> Fine. So, 